G'day guys, it's the uh, Wobbly Woodworker here again today and uh, for this video I'm going to be talking about hand saws uh, more specifically the traditional type that we used in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, Second World War um, as early as the First World War and, and before then um, I have five saws in front of me um, three uh, old saws, uh, there's a cross cut, a rip, a cheapie from a Home Depot store and a throwaway saw as I like to call it, um, a tenon saw, a dovetail saw and I'm going to go into a little bit about sharpening but just bear in mind I'm not an expert on sharpening and to be completely honest with you guys I've actually never done it, uh, it's something that I'd like to learn, um, so what I'm going to do is go through the saws, explain them, talk about them a little bit, tell you what brands they are, and uh, at the end of the video we'll do a bit of a demonstration, show you how they cut and what they're used for. Um, the three traditional saws, that's the tenon, the rip and the cross cut, they've all been freshly sharpened and they actually came back from the sharpeners two or three days ago, um, so I thought with freshly sharpened saws Let's have a go and make a video for you guys. Um, and without further ado, let's crack on into it. So uh, we'll start with a throwaway saw, which is this saw. Now this saw will look familiar to a lot of people. Uh, it is, uh, this cost me I think uh, $25 from a local home centre or hardware store or whatever you want to call it, we just call it by its name uh, so if it's called Bunnings, we just call it Bunnings uh, and that's actually where I got this one um, it is an 8 teeth per inch saw, so that means per inch on the saw blade it has 8 teeth per inch or 25.4 millimeters is also an inch in the metric system um, this has hardened teeth which is why the teeth are black. This saw cannot be resharpened. It is a throwaway saw, which is why that's what I call it. Basically designed to be used, chucked away and replaced. Um, this saw, however, for me, it always catches in the middle of the saw. It bites or binds in the cut or kerf, as it is called. Uh, the kerf is the line that the saw cuts. So a bicycle or a motorbike or a car leaves tracks. That's the same for a saw. The track, so to speak, that the saw leaves is called a kerf. Um, so this is called a bancho or backo or something. I'm not too sure how to say it. Made in Sweden. Um, and yeah, like I say, it's your throwaway saw. They come in various different types. This is a medium sized saw or sized tooth. I'm not too sure which way that is, but that's what the throwaway saw looks like, which is common to many of you around the world. Uh, you will all know what this is. And if you don't know, well, that's the point of this video. To explain it all. Uh, the next saw we're going to talk about, or next saws that I'm going to talk about, uh, the traditional hand saw made in the 1950s, 40s, 30s, end of the First World War, during the First World War, and earlier than that. Um, back when hand tools were the way to go, um, that is how things were done with these saws I'm about to show you. Um, as I said earlier, these are freshly sharpened, so they're razor, razor, razor sharp, and uh, I'll go through them and explain a little bit about the brands, what they do, and at the end of the video I will demonstrate each saw. Uh, without further ado, the first of the traditional saws I'm going to show you is 
a tenon saw. This saw is a Spear and Jackson made in um, Sheffield, England. Now you might have noticed when I grabbed hold of the saw, I grabbed it like I'm going to grab a pistol. That is because that is the correct way to grab a saw and it is the correct way to hang on to it. Um, now this is also known around the world, some Americans may call it a back saw. Uh, it's a western saw meaning it cuts on the push stroke. Um, I'll just turn that off. Um, I mean sorry, it cuts on the on the pull stroke I mean, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, this is a tenon saw, or a back saw, it is designed to cut tenons, which is a part of the mortise and tenon joint. Uh, another thing that I've, I've uh, come across while watching a few hand tool YouTube videos is that, uh, you know, I know it might be the case in America, where these sorts of tools are easily and readily available. However, in little old New Zealand, where I live, uh, they're not so much uh, readily available. Uh, you can look in second-hand shops, um, opportunity shops, um, internet websites that we have in New Zealand. There's one big one here that everybody uses to buy and sell things. Uh, Facebook, but uh, they're not uh, as readily available as what they are in America because, unfortunately, we don't have the hand tool events and uh, things like that that the Americans have. So, um, yeah, that is the Spear and Jackson tenon saw used for cutting mortise and tenons. Um, that, I believe, is uh, 10 to 15 teeth per inch. I haven't actually measured it, but it has very, very, very fine teeth along the blade. And the reason for the big back along the top is to keep the saw rigid and straight. Uh, now this big puppy here, who can tell me what this is? This is a rip saw designed for ripping with the grain. Uh, it is a Diston made in Canada. Uh, it's been restored by me and sharpened by somebody else. Um, as it hadn't been sharpened for goodness knows how long um, so I sent it away to get professionally done as I wanted to make sure the angles and everything were right so if it ever needs a touch up in the future I can do that myself knowing that the angles are correct uh, it's missing the odd tooth at the back of the saw but when you use a hand saw you don't just want to use the middle of the saw you want to use the whole length of the saw um, so yeah that's the rip saw this little one here well I say little but it is smaller than the rip is a crosscut saw it is a Tizak and Sons made in Sheffield in England now it is the traditional hand saw used by builders, carpenters, cabinet makers, um, boat builders and people of that nature, tradesmen uh, of the Second World War, 1950s, 40s and even earlier. Um, it's highly likely that it may have been used, well not this particular one, but these types of saws may have also been used to build the huts and things like that in the concentration camps of Europe in the Second World War. Um, now I'm also going to go to to a more modern saw. Um, this saw is actually a very 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 good saw. It is a little saw. It's a Veritas 20 teeth per inch uh, dovetail saw used solely for the purpose 
well I use it solely for the purpose of cutting dovetails it is a very very comfortable saw um, fits in the hand almost like a glove um, very light in fact you hardly know it's in your hand it's very 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 sharp and if I remove the protective cover uh, it has very 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 small teeth um, designed for ripping with the grain to cut the dovetails it's had very very little use um, uh, but they are the hand saws that I own um, and now I'm going to go a little bit into sharpening now just a disclaimer I have never actually sharpened a saw myself um, I have the equipment to sharpen a saw minus the saw vise that's the only thing I don't have yet uh, it's something that I'm in the marketplace for but I don't have it at this point in time um, there is a cheaper alternative to spending $100 or $50 or whatever you can find them on the market second hand market for uh, I seen one on the mar online marketplace here in New Zealand uh, for started off at $20 and was at an auction on auction so it got up to $120 um, and there was no way that I was going to pay that for a saw vice um, there is cheaper alternatives out there such as uh, saw chocks which are essentially two pieces of timber um, that go the length of a saw and they they cut out this part of the saw here so that it covers the whole blade and you can put that into your woodwork vise obviously a woodwork vise is something that I, I don't have either uh, something that I would very 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 much like but that's that's going to be one of those things that I have in the future when I build my cabinet makers bench um, which is something that I'll be doing in the future um, but anyway to sharpen a saw you need either a saw vise, a proper saw vise uh, Henry and Diston make one or did make one way back in the day um, you can buy them commercially made now however I haven't actually done any research into it but I know you can buy them uh, commercially made um, you can either buy them or you can make the saw chocks that I mentioned um, there's a good video on YouTube by Paul Sellers um, if you just search up Paul Sellers uh, saw sharpening that's an excellent video on saw sharpening um, but to sharpen a saw yes you need a vise and you also need a saw set which is what these weird looking pliers are or plier device or whatever you want to excuse me or whatever you want to call it that is what this does there is a little uh, plunger in there that goes out against the wheel now that wheel has numbers engraved in it I think that says 12 teeth per inch so if I was sharpening a 12 tooth per inch saw um, that's what I would set it to and set the teeth on the saw which will create the kerf on the saw when it is being cut or used uh, you also need some of these which is called a saw file uh, now who thinks that that saw has three sides bit of a trick question for you guys but uh, I'm sorry to tell you if you thought it had three sides you were sorely mistaken as an actual fact a saw file has six sides six sides because two sides cut the teeth or file the teeth should I say um, and the bottom actually this one would be a good example so two sides file each tooth and the bottom file, files uh, this part at the bottom of the tooth which is called the gullet 
Uh, that's designed to clear the waste as the saw cuts. Um, so that's what they do. And uh, I've actually, as I say, I've never sharpened the saw myself. But I would like to now actually give you guys a demonstration of what these saws can do. Um, so I will start off with the dovetail saw. I'll work my way back to the um, tenon saw. So I'm going to start off with a Veritas dovetail saw and I'm going to work my way back. So without further ado, here goes. Now as I say, that's the saw handle. Hand goes around, grips the saw, three fingers underneath, one like I'm going to shoot a pistol. Stops the saw twisting in my hand and with a dovetail saw you generally cut on an angle so I'm going to cut on an angle. <laughs> That's, that's a dovetail saw, very fine tooth so it doesn't rip or tear out the grain on these uh, flash pieces of timber you can get. So that's what that is designed for. And that's how it works. Um, this one I'm going to do the uh, throwaway saw that I talked about first. Now this saw can either be used for either cross cutting or ripping, um, so I'm going to use it for a rip saw. throwaway saw. Um, while I've got the wood in this orientation I will do the big mama, the distant. Now just a little bit about a little bit extra about the saw. Um, if any of you guys out there in the world are saw experts or you know a bit about these traditional hand saws, uh, I believe this is a distant D8 um, which is one of the bigger uh, hand saws. If I'm incorrect can you please uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll be very grateful for that information. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how this works. Now this is quite a big saw, it's got a big handle. Um, saw with the big teeth that's designed to rip the grain. Now I'm going to turn this piece of scrap timber over and um, we're going to use the uh, Tyzak and Sons uh, crosscut saw. Um, so again the pistol grip to hold the saw, stop the twisting. Now notice as I'm cutting I'm using the whole saw as a stroke. I'm using the whole saw blade. I'm not using a piece in the middle or whatever, I'm using the whole saw to do the stroke. Which helps cut the wood not only quicker, but it also uses the whole saw which uses all the teeth, rather than just a little wee piece in the middle, which is what a lot of people do. Um, better off to use the whole saw. And this little puppy, as I said, is the Spear and Jackson English made tenon saw. 
and I'm gonna just do a cut with this one. Now another thing I think that's also worth mentioning is when you're cutting, you know, just just take your time, you know. It's, it's not a it's not a race. Um, just let the saw do the work, you know. It's there's no point in in getting a saw. Now that's quite loose. You know? I'm going to show you guys what I mean. There's there's no point in getting a saw. Now I'm going to use the tenon saw to do this. There's no point in getting a saw and just going like this. You know, like, that's just really, really rushed. Um, yeah, you might, you might, you might think, well, bro, I can, I can do that. You know, I can, I can cut it, cut it twice as quick. But if you've got a lot of cutting to do, or you, you're cutting something that's pretty darn thick. Or you're cutting a sheet of plywood or, or something like that um, you, well, hey, you, you're gonna run out of puff pretty quick um, but also you're gonna end up with sore elbows and sore shoulders after a while so if you just again I'll, I'll do the tenon saw um, to use this for a demonstration but also if you just you know you're stuck you just let the saw do the work You know, if it's sharp, you shouldn't need to force it through the cut. You should not need to force it. Um, so just remember, just let the saw do the work. It makes it easier on your body, so you'll have more energy to do other things. Um, anyway, that's probably going to be it for this video. Uh, guys, um, if you like this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. Um, like the video and uh, comment and subscribe if you could do that that would be brilliant if you have any questions or queries or you want to know something about saws that I haven't mentioned here um, leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you um, hope you enjoyed it and until next time um, enjoy your woodwork and keep your shavings flowing and most of all be safe out there thanks